Afrobeats will soon no longer belong to Africans. Just like jazz, blues, country music, hip-hop, rap, any genre that was created by black people is no longer ours. And this is because we don't protect our shit. We don't protect what we create and we do not protect our cultures. So these other races infiltrate and steal what we invent. Just like country music. Country music was created by black people in America, but it's no longer ours anymore. Now, our children think that country music was made by white people, but in reality, it was made by black people. But because we didn't protect what we created, it's no longer ours. And soon, Afrobeats will no longer be ours. Um. Yeah, so the Grammys have decided to give us a colonized... Definition of what Afrobeats is. We <laughs> don't get keeping up. We actually we do not get keeping up. So the Grammys tweeted, Afrobeats is a mesmeric blend of West African and Black American music that has quickly become a global pop phenomenon. So I read it. So what? <laughs> you heard it right. He said Afrobeats is a mesmeric blend of West African and Black American music. Oh my God. If these black Americans don't get is the right? fuck exactly out of here, are these men take, are you men taking the piss? Uh, what? So you know what? We just sorry. <laughs> this is. I'm, I'm actually going to really up a fair egregious, time egregious. because it's wild. <laughs> Afrobeats. Afrobeats. They didn't even know about exactly. no Afrobeats. Exactly. Are you people sick? <laughs> it's not their fault. And I will get to why it's not their fault. <sighs> Afrobeats is a mesmeric <laughs> blend of West Africa. Hey, I will just quit the show now, you know. <laughs> you don't want to quit, you want to leave. All right, everyone. Thank you all for joining me today. I am your man, Corb J. And I'm excited to bring you this video today. You are going to love this video. Because we're talking about the West and their attempt to now redefine Afrobeat to the rest of us. You see, never mind that Afrobeat has become a phenomenon which became really popular on the continent. A music genre started by Nigerians whose most artists are Nigerians known all over the world. And the West, United States in particular, being the last ones to adopt Afrobeat, now want to tell us what Afrobeat is. Let me, let me give you a definition of what they have defined Afrobeat as. So Afrobeat is a rhythmic fusion of West African music and Black American music steadily growing popularity in the U.S. Let me read that again. Afrobeat is a rhythmic fusion of West African music and Black American music steadily growing popularity in the U.S. You see, I can't, I, I can't, man. Uh, <laughs> it's not their fault. It really is not. But on a serious note, I am not surprised at this because when you think about the West, their nature and their true nature has always been to steal to cause conflict, to redefine, and to relabel something that is perfect from other culture. That is their identity. It is almost like a parasite type of behavior where the only way they survive is to infiltrate and to steal from other people. I want you to take a look at this interview that was done on GMA with Ashake when he was being interviewed by Good Morning America on his rise and popularity in Afrobeats. Take a look at this and I'll come back with my commentary. With Afrobeats, the rhythmic fusion of West African and Black American music, steadily growing popularity in the U.S. and Nigerian singer Ashake is the rising star, making people all over the world dance to his chart-topping hits. Our Phil Lipoff sat down with him to talk about his journey to music. Take a look. So, you heard that opening intro of uh, Afro being a Western Africa and Black American music. You would think that African Americans and Black people went and sat together in a room somewhere 
and they say, hey, let's create a music genre called Afrobeat. This is the image that they want to give you, right? This is the image that a, <laughs> a part of the world that just adopted Afrobeat, they're still trying to figure out what Afrobeat is. They don't know what it is. They don't understand the language. They don't know what it is. They just know that it's all over the place, okay? They know that it's on TikTok. These young kids are singing it. It's in South America. Asian folks, grandpas and grandma over there in, in China are singing this thing. They're singing all over in Japan. It's all over Africa, the continent of Africa. They go to clubs in, in Latin America. It is all over the place. They don't know what it is. Like, okay, hold on. Let's just find someone. And they look for, and they saw that a rising star, like Ashake, they see him. They're like, oh, wow, this is great. Let's go ahead and have this segment with him. And use this as an opportunity to redefine this whole thing. That Afrobeat is not a Nigerian music, but it's a West African music and Black American music that is now gaining popularity. Can you imagine that? It is now becoming very popular in the United States. Now, with all due respect to African Americans and Black people, you have nothing to do with Afrobeat. And African Americans know this. African American knows that when it comes to black people, because you know African Americans always are very prideful for what they created in the United States. You know, you hear them beating the chest about how they built America. So they know that when it comes to this music Afrobeat, they have nothing to do with it. Nothing. I mean, the whole world knows it. You won't find one African American person unless that person is disingenuous and just wants to be a radical person to cause some kind of conflict or want a clout. You won't find one that would say that they influenced or somehow had something to do with Afrobeat's creation or they were partners with us creating this. And you wouldn't find one. So African Americans know that Afrobeat is a, is a Nigerian music. It's an African music. They know this. Now, here's the kicker though. African Americans did not define this. This is not their doing. No, 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 no. If you think that this is what they did, you'll be behind, you'll be, you'll be sadly mistaken. African Americans have nothing to do with this definition. What you're looking for and what you need to point your eyes on are the men behind the curtain in the West. You see, I did a video not too long ago where I talked about how white folks have really settled on the idea that when it comes to black people and black success, they have to be behind it for it to really happen. I talked about extensively in that video, which I'm going to link, how the only people that have defiled this have been Nigerians. And with the creation of Afrobeats and Nollywood, these two conglomerates have really defiled this whole thing that white folks have really become very comfortable with. That when it comes to black people, that un unless white folks and their media promote this, it would never be successful. And now we're seeing the reverse of it, where a music genre became very successful, and they're tailing behind this. And so in order to get in front of it, they have to give you the new definition that you're seeing right now. But here's what you need to pay attention to. Why African Americans? Why are they infusing African Americans with the creation of Afrobeat when they come up with this fictitious definition. You see, they don't know what it is. You see, that interview that I'm about to show, I'm about to show you another clip of this interview to show the ignorance of this white media when it comes to a beautiful music genre like Afrobeat. They don't know what it is. They just know that it's all over the place. See this one interviewer talk about when he hears Afrobeat. They tell you the ignorance and a lack of understanding of this music genre. When he hears Afrobeat, he hears reggae. <laughs> Take a listen to this. <laughs> What makes up Afrobeats? I hear a lot of things when I listen to Afrobeats, things that I know from my past, whether it be a little bit of reggae or a little bit of dance. I hear a lot of things in there. What, what do you hear when, when you listen I to Afrobeats? I think what I like in it is the spirituality. And his rhythms do feel spiritual. Rhythm. You hear that, right? Uh, most of us, that would be laughable because when we hear Afrobeats, you're not hearing reggae. 
Reggae and Afrobeat are two different music genres. Afrobeat and reggae are two different music genres. You're not hearing reggae and Afrobeat. Not unless there's a reggae artist collaborating with Afrobeat artists. But Afrobeat in its tr truest form, in its element, there's no reggae in it. You won't find that in the melody. You won't find that in the lyrics. You won't find that in any of... You won't find this in that. But that's, the, that's to show you the, uh, the ignorance and the lack of understanding of the music genre. However, the arrogance is to redefine it because, like I said, the West has always operated on this stance that we have to give black people an identity, otherwise they won't have one. We have to tell you what your name is. What is your name? That's not your name. <laughs> Toby's your name. Now, what is your name? Your name is in what your father gave you. Your name is in what your culture gave you. I'm going to give you a new name. I'm going to give you a new identity. I'm going to tell the world the image which you are. And the image that we're comfortable with to tell that the world needs to know about you is you're a savage. You're destructive. Your violence. That is the image that we're okay with. And so the idea that you're going to start a music genre that is so beautiful, that is somehow all over the world, and we did not know about this, we can't have this. Let me take you guys into history real quickly. And the history I want to give you is why African Americans? I want to tell you why they're using African Americans, you know, which is a way to create a war between Africans and African Americans. Like we'd already have one. And I'm going to tell you how history repeats itself with Afrobeat. You see, understand that the men behind the curtain cannot stand to see black folks have an invention like Afrobeat or Nollywood become successful that instills a sense of pride into black people. That children in black communities in Africa can look up to artists, can look up to themselves and see greatness emerge from themselves. That is something that men behind the curtain, people in the West, can't stand. And they have to find a way to subjugate black people and destroy everything beautiful with black people. It, had, it started with history, and I'm going to paint you a history that this first started with, with a music genre called hip-hop, Once Upon a Time. Hip-hop started in 1973 by a Jamaican national called DJ Cool Herc. DJ Cool Herc after his parents had migrated into the United States years prior, in his dorm, had an idea of a music genre, which we've since known to be hip-hop. But at the time, it was just an idea. Had a couple of turntables that he put together, had friends over, he just wanted to show his skills and craft. Created something that was born on that day. It then moved into the streets of New York, where the kids were experimenting with this new sound and this new flavor that have since been called hip-hop. They were experimenting it and they invented what we called break dancing. And then they were using art, graffitis, to really express themselves. Hip-hop then moved from that to a voice of the people where people utilize hip-hop as a way to really speak of the injustice, the subjugation, that black folks were feeling in the black communities at the time. Hip-hop was a voice of the people, a social justice warrior campaign, if you will, that then moved from that to a mainstream element where hip-hop now began to tell people how to dress, how to wear their clothes. It became cool. Brand advertising companies started to use hip-hop to promote their labels, to promote their brand. Hip-hop now began to really create CEOs and, and job creators, where the artists now began to create clothing lines for themselves, labels, their own brand, influence other brand. Hip-hop was a force that could undeniably be recognized. This was not cool to the men behind the curtain, who saw black folks really emerging as something to be respected. Everyone wanted to be black. Everyone 
wanted to be African American. Everyone wanted to adopt this. People from other countries learned about black culture because of hip hop. And so white folks and white artists began to collaborate with a lot of the hip hop artists. And we began to see the infusion of black and white really melting together because of this one music genre. Not long after that, the men behind the curtains who have always existed, who never liked what was going on, wanted to portray black people as one thing, savage. Because that's all they wanted the world to know about black people, whether it's Africans or whether it's black people in this country. And so they needed to create an element that would disrupt this love and this romantic love story that hip hop had just created. So they go ahead and find somebody, and one of the most popular artists in the East Coast, Notorious B.I.G., and they find another popular artist in the West Coast, Tupac, and they set these two against one another. And how did they you do that? They looked at they looked for the media, and they go ahead and get soundbite from one and get soundbite from the other, and they set them against each other, to where these two these two territories and these two areas, East Coast and West Coast, began to battle out. It became such a norm to where their consumers didn't care no longer about the messaging and the positivity with hip-hop. They wanted to see the beef between two territories, between two great artists battling out. It was, as, it was first innocent where they were using their lyrics to exchange competitive animosity towards each other. It then moved from there to a violent beef where guns were involved. Now, others that came after them began to emulate this type of lifestyle. And the men behind the curtains, just stringing this whole thing along, sat back and watched hip-hop destroy itself from within. To the point that most of us now, when we think of hip-hop, we don't think of hip-hop as the most beautiful music genre that once established itself as a voice of the people. Something that influenced culture, that influenced art, that influenced clothing line, that influenced brand. We see hip-hop as what it's become today, a violent element that most people are trying and uh, are trying to separate themselves from. The men behind the curtains have succeeded in destroying a beautiful black creativity. And here we go again with history repeating itself. So now we have, on the other side of the Atlantic, Africans, Nigerians in particular, coming up with a music genre like Afro Beats. Taking over the world. And how dare you do this without the influence of white people? Because believe it or not, for the first time in history, in modern history, something was created without white folks involved in it. And it became a global phenomenon. As a matter of fact, they are late to the table. And by the time they looked around, they saw everyone all over the place listening to this. And so now we need to go ahead and repeat the same thing we did with hip hop, the same playbook. We need to do it with this music genre, Afrobeat. It's in its romantic phase right now. But here's how we infiltrate it. Let's go ahead and redefine this. Because this is history repeating itself. So they give it a definition. Knowing fully where they have a large platform. Knowing fully where that artists like Ashake or DeVito or Wizkid or every other artist would seize an opportunity to get interviewed by one of these media platforms. There's nothing wrong with Ashake going to GMA to get interviewed. There's nothing wrong with that. And to tell you the truth, someone like Ashake and DeVito, these are strong patriots of Nigerian culture. When you look at his lyrics and when you listen to him, everything about him, is he's got the ancestors and the spirit of the ancestors revolving around him. There are a few artists that I consider to be diehard Patriots of Nigerian culture. Ashake is one of them. DeVito is another one. Wizkid is another one. Wizkid told BET. Who was trying to give him his award when he won an award a couple of years ago. They were going to give it to him in the back. They weren't going to present it to him in front of the stage with everybody else. Wizkid told them to go to hell with that. If you're not going to give me my award in front of everyone on stage then I don't want to accept the award, which is why Whiskey doesn't go to BET anymore. These people were going to just give it to him in the back, like treat him like a stepchild, an A-list artist, because that's what the West does. They don't want to recognize Africans and Nigerians for their popularity. So they got to redefine this whole thing. 
And then you have true artists like these guys that are diehard fans everywhere they are. They're giving kudos to Nigeria. I'm going to come back to that point in a little bit. So African Americans with hip hop destroyed. So now we have Afrobeat gaining popularity. Such a beautiful music genre. You got people in China singing this thing. You got people in, in Mexico dancing to this stuff. You got prisoners using Rema song and they, they, they coordinating dance steps with Afrobeat. This stuff is all, is all in the prisons now. It's all over the place. We see it on YouTube. So let's go ahead and jump in front of this thing. And let's let our white audience know that we own this or we, we've got a control on this because we're getting calls. We're getting calls from people talking about, hey, do you see black people are really inspiring themselves with this stuff? Because they can't have you be inspired. They can't have your children learn that black folks invent anything that is pure and is clean and is nonviolent and the whole world loves it. Because the true nature that they want the world to know about you is that you're a savage beast. You're no good. You're, not, you're violent. That is the image that they have to show by you. Is that you need us. Which is why the image of Africa portrayed to African Americans have always been people that you don't want to be like those guys. See, you ought to be thankful that we got you as slaves. Because if you were not slaves in America, which has now made you Americans, you would be in Africa. Look at how those people are malnourished. Look at what's going on over there. Do you want to be like them? And the image that these African Amer uh, Africans have shown about African Americans is that look at these unruly people that are so they're giving everything in the world, but look at how they're behaving. So they use the media to set us against each other. That's why African Americans have put in this definition. Because over the years, African Americans and Africans have had a tension with each other. There's been a tension between these two. Doesn't matter anyone in Africa. There's been a tension, most, most especially Nigerians and African Americans. There's been a tension. Now, not all, all, not all African Americans feel this way about Nigerians, by the way. But nonetheless, you have a vocal minority on the internet that seem to hate Africans. So this is an opportunity to go ahead and let's go ahead and infuse them in a definition when they had nothing to do with it. Because naturally what's going to happen, because here's the chess game, naturally what's going to happen is you're going to have the promoters of Afrobeat, CJ, and many others are going to identify this. Like, Hold on a second. And they're going to tell their audiences, yo, black people are trying to steal Afrobeat from us. And then what's going to happen, going to, we're going to create content. And we're going to turn against each other. While the men behind the curtain, they're stringing this whole thing, sit back and watch this whole thing implode within itself. This is a playbook that has repeated itself over and over again. But let me tell you what they fail to understand is that black folks have always been an intelligent being for centuries, over the history. And then this guy, CJ, I ain't falling for this. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? I ain't falling for that because I can see. I can see the deception all over this. It is the attempt to try to cause a war between us. Because what happens now is you create a content or you create a narrative like this. And you begin to really stare people in that direction. So I'm asking questions like, hold on. Black America, what the hell are you talking about? You didn't create Afrobeat because what they, the perception they want to create is that black Americans define this when they had nothing to do with this. They had nothing to do with this definition. Most African Americans celebrate Afrobeat as a creation of Nigerians and Africa. They celebrate this. You're not going to find on the internet any intelligent, reasonable African American that will tell you that Afrobeat is a black American music and African music. You're not going to find that. You might find one or two ignorant ones, but you're not going to find anyone with any sense of intelligence tell you that they somehow came together to create Afrobeat. No. They will tell you that Afrobeat is Af African music, Nigerian music. However, it doesn't stop the men behind the curtain. White culture, from wanting to create a beef between the two of us, with hoping 
that it will set us against each other. Now, how are they going to do it? The same old dogs that they've always used in the back, in the, in the, uh, in the fight in the past. So they'll use their media. And this is how they're going to do it. The same way they did with hip hop, with East Coast and West Coast, using sound bites to set up against each other. This is how they're going to do it. Pay attention. So I'm about to give you history so that way you can watch out for what's going to happen. And when you start to see this play itself, you know that CJ told you about this. Here's how they're going to do it because I've seen this whole playbook over and over again. They're going to go find a very popular Afrobeat artist. So let's use, uh, let's use Whiskey, for example. They're going to say, hey, Whiskey, how you doing? What's going on? You, 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 you know, your music, this new album, you just dropped, awesome album, great arm, album, is awesome, it's all over the world. What do you think about this, Afro, uh, this African-American artist that's uh, popular, that's up and coming? And Whiskey is going to go on and on and say, hey, that, was, that artist is an amazing artist. I'm proud of what he's done. He's such an amazing artist. He's really doing it. It's an inspiration to his community. It's an inspiration to all of us. We're glad about the work he's doing. And they're going to ah, okay, go. They're going to find another one. So what do you buy this artist? And Whiskey is going to say the same thing. It's going to glorify the artist. And they're going to look for the one criticism that Whiskey might have. Just a tiny little criticism that he might have. That he perhaps said in a jokey way. They're going to use that. They're going to cut that sound bite. And they're going to play that to the artist. And say, hey, here's what Whiskey said about you. They're going to delete the other stuff. That Whiskey, and I'm usually using Whiskey for example, it could be any other artist. They're going to delete the other stuff and they're going to play that sound bite. And he or she is going to hear that. And by what? Because of the tension that has always been there. And he's going to see it as a threat, as an attack to his culture, to his art. And he or she is going to, is going to go into the, uh, into the uh, 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 studio and come up with what's called a beef response. And they're going to move that. And they're going to play that to Whiskey. And Whiskey is going to hear that. And he's going to be attempted to respond to that. This is how they're going to introduce violence into Afrobeat. Because they can't have Afrobeat in its beautiful form. Just like hip-hop. Because that's, insp that's inspiring to black people. You know, when you have Afrobeat, everyone is just talking about how beautiful, how loving, how united they are. This is now the image they want to have of you. The image that they need the whole world to remember and to keep of you, black people, is that you are a savage beast. You're a violent thing. Nothing you do is good. Nothing you do is going to last. Nothing you do is coming out of something of pureness, of a good spirit. They need to give that perception of you. So Afrobeat, they're going to try to introduce an element of violence. By turning Africans and Nigerians against African Americans and vice versa. To the point now artists are going to want to like feel the need to respond to each other. When the entire time the only person that really sparked this whole thing is the media and the man behind the curtain. Now to you and I all you see is black and black people going at it. But you don't understand the money and the influence and power that, is, that it takes, that the people behind the curtain have over these two people. Because as long as African artists or hip-hop artists want to be on news network like GMA, CNN, MSNBC, NBC, CNBC, whatever the hell they are. As long as they want to be on this platform. Because to, to many of us, we think that that is the epitome of success. Once we are on one of these platforms, the whole world knows us. But Afrobeat became global without even one Afrobeat artist on one of these platforms. And the whole world knew who they were. And that is the defiance of Nigerians. And that is the stuff that they can't have. Because Nigerians defiled, they defiled this whole thing. This whole logic that until white people promote black people, no one is going to know who they are. They defiled this whole thing. Because the whole world knew who Burner Boy was before Burner Boy even showed up on BBC. The whole world knew who all these artists were before they even showed up on all of these stuff. Most of the most popular songs that we've all known about the artists, whether it's Burner Boy, DeVito, Ashake, or Thames, or Fireboy DML, or you know, uh, 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 or, or Rema, or any one of these artists. 
The songs that we've all known that have been the biggest of them is the ones that didn't have a collaboration with anyone in the West. Their biggest songs, even the ones that they collaborated with certain elements in the West, those songs did not become as popular as when they were just in their natural form, in their natural la Nigerian language, in a natural Nigerian culture. Those are the ones that we all remember and know of. If you think I'm lying, go watch those same songs when they were sung without the collaboration of any of these Western artists in, in, with them. The views on that are phenomenal compared to what you would see with the West. We want the collaboration. But the point I'm making is that we promoted our own. We bigged up our own. We exported our own without any white influence in it. And they, the men behind the curtains know this. And they can't have that. So we've got to give it a definition, which is how it starts. And we've got to create a tension between these two. And then next is we use sound bites between these two cultures. And we, we turn them against each other. Before you know it, all the consumers are going to gravitate towards wanting to see the response from one over the other. And that's how you create a beef. Before you know it, it becomes a violent music genre. And thus, history repeating itself. So I'm sounding this out because I am what you call a town crier. I'm a person that can see things miles away. And my experiences and my education have allowed me and afforded me the gift of seeing the handwriting when it comes to marketing. You see, in marketing... Which I have a degree in. I have a BBA in marketing. I have an MBA in marketing. Not to mention I have 20 years in this field. Brand advertising. Brand imagery. Is one thing I've used over and over again. In marketing is what's called the rule of seven. Which is essentially a science. And a study that have shown that. People need to see something seven times. Before they believe it. Which is how. TV ads. Radio. I've often influenced the way we behave and what we buy. This is why frequency ads are run on a frequency version. So you see it over and over again and you believe it. Right? It's called the rule of seven. Which is how a lot of even when you hear things over and over again, you're going to believe it. This is how they can, they can send a messaging that's false to you. So the image that we all have about ourselves, about mostly black people, is an image of negativity because they fed us that. And so they need to go back to business as usual because what we're trying to do is recreate our image and reinvent ourselves and say, this is not who we are. And the world is seeing it, but they need to destroy it. So every single time we come up with an art, whether it's music, whether it's, whether it's, whether it's acting, whether it's an education, whatever that is, they have to change it. Either buy it, buy us, buy us out of it, or they have to change that element, influence it to where it goes from the beautiful, art, beautiful art, artistic thing that we've known it to a violent thing that the world now sees it to be because they want you to be seen as violent. And so now a beautiful music genre like Afrobeat is where they're coming for now. So I'm going to say this and I'll close. Now here is the miscalculation of the West. It's one thing that they didn't and they, they, they're taking for granted. And that is what's going to derail this whole agenda. One thing. And this is something that separates Afrobeat from hip-hop. So hip-hop was an expression of artistic craft and ability. Afrobeat, an expression of culture. This is the two differences between these two. I'm going to say that again. Hip-hop was an expression of artistic ability and art artistic creativity. Afrobeat is an expression of culture. Okay, so for us mostly in Nigeria, we put our culture before anything else. In other words, how we grew up, we're going to always bring that up before anything else. We're going to see certain things as, uh, I don't think so. Right? Most of us, no matter what part of the world we live in, we always still refer back to our culture. We're very traditional in that way. Even the few of us that are modern, we still have our cultural and our traditional way but that, that really sort of govern us. I mean, take for example, most of you that got married. Even I did it. When we got met, when we get married, we do two marriages. We have to have a traditional wedding. We have to have the uh, the English wedding. And why? No matter where we live in the world, we have to do this because no matter what, our culture and our tradition goes with us. 
Now, what am I going? Where am I going with this? Because Afrobeat, which is a Nigerian culture exported to the world, is mostly an expression of that culture. It'll be hard for the West to break that because when they begin to do this beef thing that we've seen seen play over and over again. There is going to be a drawing of the line. The Nigerians and most Africans are going to say, I am not buying that album. And it's going to derail that. It's not going to be as popular or bought into as, as hip-hop was bought into. Many of the artists might even say, hey, I'm not going to produce that because my people ain't going to buy that. It is not going to work. And they're going to find out that that is something that is not going to be easily penetrable. You're not going to be able to break that because it's a cultural thing that has held the people like that for a thousand or so years. And that is something that's going to give Afrobeat a lifespan that most other music genre did not have. And that is the thing that I think will be the saving grace for Afrobeat. But nonetheless, make no mistake about it. There is a war against Afrobeat by the men behind the curtain and they don't want to see it have this lasting impression of beautiful sound, beautiful melody that inspires black people, Africans all over the place. Where they're trying to take this is to take it where they took hip hop, which is really crash it and make it a place of violence. But they're gonna have a hard time penetrating through that because Afrobeat is a cultural element. It's an expulsion of culture, which will be hard for them to penetrate. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Please like this video, share this content, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all next time. The fishing in Ananda is a store by my side, oh why? So the two rap put it for me, or the other baby. For them, I yard is yard is. Don't be little bother on the roads. Men do a fat of only. But they are legged, I mean, dear. They will hard, they hard, they hard. Information and safety.